Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Today, I have Clayton Bailey. He's been here before. He talked about smart home systems, right? That's yep. what you did over lo- online. So you can go back and check out his previous podcast. But today, the, what we want to talk about is training first and then marketing, mainly because you're in the training mindset. You're here in Houston. You're normally from the Dallas Fort Worth area and you're here teaching home inspectors through a hit. And so I figured you're like kind of in that mindset of like training. And then I want to talk about marketing too, because in my previous uh, podcast, I talked with Matt Brewster about marketing. He's a roofer, but you have a unique style of marketing too, as well, completely different than mine. I mean, you still hit the social media real hard, but you're more about like social events and like parties and stuff. And I guess COVID may have hit you a it's little a bit. It's a bummer. Yeah. Like, Cause of COVID. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. You're a party animal. Yeah. You know? I've seen your, I've seen your stuff on social media and uh, yeah. So that's pretty much it. And you know, one of the things that spoke to me the most about leading into this podcast, what made me think about marketing and you said, Hey, I'm coming down. I want to do a podcast was I saw someone write on Facebook it was a home inspector and he wrote, before you even start your home inspection business, you need a marketing plan because I see too many good home inspectors go out of business. They're, they're good at what they do, yeah. but they can't land any jobs. And so your very first step is a marketing plan before you do anything else. Yep. And so I figured you'd be like one of the best persons to be there for another piece of advice on marketing. So what's your style? So you, you can see my style. We right. <laughs> yeah. So usually it's the fancy pants and the fancy uh, shorts or shirt or whatever it is. Anything that I can do to be stand out in the crowd. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to try to stand out as much as possible because that's the moment that people always want to come take selfies with you. People always want to like, Oh my gosh, I want to take a picture with that guy. Right. So that's the main thing is like, you're getting the attention. And then when you have something intelligent to say in a CE situation for a real estate agent, you're actually teaching, uh, you can kind of hold their attention. So you don't have all the squirrels going. They're like, Oh my God, look at this guy's outfit. Oh yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Can you, that outfit's nuts. So you, you actually go and, in front of everyone dressed up in your outfits, it, yeah. teaching your CE classes. Yeah. I've, I've got a whole theme of, uh, since COVID hit, I had to change my game. Right. So I had to buy some more jackets. Uh, so there's one time a year that they go on sale cause they're usually like 450 bucks. Oh my goodness. So not this one, this is just an oppo suit. You can get this like online. I think it's 99 bucks or whatever it is. So mm. I have seasonal clothing. So I have jackets or crazy things that I'll wear if it's Valentine's day or if it's, 4th of July or Christmas or whatever it is for the season, I probably have a jacket for that moment. Okay, nice. Yeah. So there was actually that you're speaking of like this whole partying thing. Uh, There is this one specific thing that sticks out to me. You were at this bar once with a bunch of agents and you you're actually really good at karaoke and you had like this wig and, (laughs) you know, and you're dressed up in your like green, but also you, I don't know who you're dressed up like, but you, it, it just stuck with me, but obviously it stuck with me, another home inspector in a different <laughs> area of the state. So you got to think about what it did to everybody at that bar at the same time, you know, yeah. your marketing, you know, the extravagant, you know, dress up flashy marketing style works you know you don't all i go as like i dress up like a home inspector but you kind of dress up as like a character you gotta you gotta dress it up you gotta have fun with it you gotta um uh, sort of make fun of yourself to get other people to come out of their shell right you gotta because right. they want to be funny too but you i'm the icebreaker right so i'm gonna be the guy i'll make a fool out of myself <laughs> just so you'll join in in karaoke because if i can be silly you can be silly too. So I try to go over the top and be super silly. They're like, well, this guy, this clown right here can do it. Like, all right, I'm not going to look as silly as this guy. So we can totally do this. Nice. Nice. So you got to think like, you know, a lot of new home inspectors listen to this or people that don't really market at all. Listen to this. What would be a good first step? I mean, like most people aren't going to dress up in a clown suit, like right away and jump in and start teaching CE. So what would you think is a, like a good process to like get into that style of marketing? Absolutely. So the biggest, uh, the best advice I, I can give is, is to get people involved and get them 
make them feel like they're a part of the group. So if you've ever been to an office Christmas party or they have their office, their award ceremony or whatever it is, um, everybody gets kind of clicky and they go to their little groups, right? And, and then this team is over here. Well, they're going to go sit with this table over here. And the moment that you can get them to sort of mingle, but kind of compete against each other, but be the ringleader, then it's a party and everybody has fun. And at the end of the day, you're going to get invited back because they had fun with you. And so uh, I always make the joke, you know, I, I dress up uh, as an alarmist inspector, but we are not alarmist inspectors. <laughs> <laughs> I just look like I am. Uh, actually- and I don't wear this to inspections, by the way, although I did have the request one time from a uh, an NBA player that I had to wear the outfit to a an inspection. So no I actually way. just wore the pants. Yeah. He, he wanted you to wear he, the he pants. He was like, man, I see you online. You got to wear the pants to the inspection. And I was like, okay, so, you know, here <laughs> you, I go. You wore your like money pants or your, your fancy pants. I wore the fancy green pants. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, and I'll, I'll do this at events. So like, um, we took our kids, uh, for fun. We took them to a Justin T- Timberlake concert. So I wore the crazy outfit at the Justin Timberlake concert and, and just to embarrass my kids, my kids are not phased by it anymore. They have <laughs> no clue. They just think that all dads wear this kind of stuff, I guess. And so, yeah, whatever. So if I go to a golf tournament, I'm wearing the crazy loud golf pants or whatever it is. So I want people to engage with me. I want to talk to them, right? So it is an easy that's, icebreaker. That's a, it's the it's called peacocking. Yeah. So if I've got if I show it all out there and throw it all out there, it's it's gonna gonna come it's, this way. It's easily approachable. <laughs> yes. So besides like you know dressing up, you know, and being like the center of the party, which I know you're good at. I've seen it like nonstop. <laughs> What other marketing techniques that you think that work inside your business? Because not everyone's going to do that because I'm obviously not going to do that because I like videos, you know, I do social media stuff and I do really good inspections and we do like letter writing. But like, what would you say is another key thing that helps you grow your business? If you're starting out as a first time inspector, brand new to the business, um, this is the most critical time and it's the hardest time because when you're out marketing and agents find out and they smell that new eight, new inspector smell, they're like, get him out of here, get him out of here. Don't like be nice to him, but get him out of here. I'm not dealing with that. So it's really hard. Uh, so focus on, um, making sure that you're doing the right things. So, and you get into it, are you doing physical marketing? Are you doing digital marketing? Are you doing online marketing, right? You have to touch on all of those kind of spokes of the wheel to make sure that the wheel goes round and round. If you only send out card, do send out cards or constant contact, and that's your only way, and you're not getting any return off of that, there's a reason you got to do multiple things, right? We were talking about this earlier at dinner, how everybody has like multiple different personality types. Everybody's going to have different things that reach out to them. And for a real estate agent, they want to make sure that they're going to trust you with this huge transaction, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's a lot of faith and it's a lot of trust. And so the main thing is know me, like me and trust me. Know me, like me, trust me. So yeah, there, Actually, out of all of that, I was listening and one of the things that you said, and it was funny, it relates to me all the way back when I first started my home inspection business. And my dad's been in business like 18 or 19 years by the time I started my business. And I I asked him, I was like, what, what's the one thing that sells home inspections? Like wh- the one thing that works. And he was like, there's not one thing that works. It's everything. It's having the whole it's, thing. It's, it's everything. Everything and, going. And I was like, and I was like, yeah, right. I didn't believe him. And that still happens to me today. Like some people ask me like, what's the number one thing that sells home inspection? And I'm like, hey, there's not one thing that sells home inspections. It's like your report, your website, you know, letter writing, dressing up, you know, going to events, you know, co- constant contact, emails. It's we have so much information just shooting out all the time. Social media on all platforms. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's just not it, one thing. And it takes uh, so statistically, it's shown that back in the day, probably 10 years ago, uh, it was 12 touches. You had to have a physical contact or meet an agent twelve, or you had to email them or you had to have some sort of interaction with them. Mm-hmm. It was 12 ages today because of social media, because we have the attention span of gnats, 
we have to like have a lot of different stuff. So now it's 24. So 24 times before someone sees you on social media, before they get an email, before they ha have an interaction with you, that's a the personal one on one before they're going to send you business. And so that's the, the biggest thing. Just know going into marketing that it takes time. It's not something that just happens overnight. Yeah, you said 12. I thought it was something as little as like four. So you're staying at top of mind. So you're saying it's all the way up to 24 times. Yeah. So it's like your email might have to be in their email thing, you know, their inbox where they don't read it at all. Now but let they me, need let to me, see it six let me times. Kinda, yeah. it, they got to see not just an email, but and when I say touches, I'm saying that could be a physical mail. That could be an email. That could be something that you posted on social media. That could be a... Uh, anything getting involved with their office to do some sort of uh, charity they saw you event. In person. Yeah. Right. They're going to see you in person, taking them to lunch, doing a one on one. There's all these different ways that you have the ability to reach out to somebody, but you have to do it in today's society at least 24 times before someone is going to trust you enough to send you business. Yeah. So that that friendship or trust yes. or you know, just trust. Yeah. Just that trust. We're like, oh, this person is going to take care of me and my client yeah. to make sure that this transaction goes through smoothly yeah that's crazy 24 man that's mind-blowing to me i need <laughs> so now, i'm sure i do that you know you obviously, do absolutely because you're very yeah. strong at social media so yeah, agents see just, you all the time yeah so that that's insane 24 that's that's a that's a pretty large number for someone that just started out so like if they're wondering why that ball isn't rolling yet be like uh, it takes a minimum, yeah. probably 30 days of consistent marketing before the trust is even built. Like you have to be marketing every day for an entire month yeah. before the trust is built. And then it takes another 30 to 90 days for a job to even flourish with that friendship or relationship that's been built. Yeah. That's a, that's pretty intense. You, th you think about the trust that's involved in the home inspection business. And it is a, a huge thing because pe agents work really hard to farm their sphere. Just like you and I are talking about farming our sphere. Mm. Agents, that's all they do is farm their sphere. So this right. is their whole life is farming their sphere of influence, right? So mm. if you have a moment that you are going to come into their circle of trust, that's huge because right. they're trusting you with all of their hard work and effort. And so you have to, I, that's why I wear crazy stuff. You have to liven it up. You have to be fun. You have to be personable. You have to be there for them in situations that most other people wouldn't, you know, they're going to recognize, man, he answered his phone on the weekend or he was able to get me into inspection like at the last minute. Oh my gosh. They're mm -hmm. going to remember these things. You and I were just talking about at dinner, how, you know, doing a good job at your report and having a lengthy report that has information in it. Versus that agent's going to go deal with this other guy that has a two page report or three page report. Yeah. And he's just pissed because now he sees the quality of your work versus the quality of this other one. He's going to go with you. So you just like reel them in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking as you were talking, how I said, you know, let's talk about training first. <laughs> and then we start talking we about marketing. marketing right into and, it. Yeah, because. That's all. That's what like you and I's job now. You know, that's all we do is market, market, market. And I thought it was funny. I was like, training's at the top of my mind because we're training two people and then you're training right now. And then <laughs> we went into marketing right off the bat because that's just Boom. what I like to do, you know, with, with home inspecting. That's really funny. So let's get back on track with training then. Okay. So, right. You're here and you're in the Houston area and you're training. And I did the A hit thing uh, about, I'd say a few weeks ago. I can't really remember. I think it's about a month ago. And I remember it's been a long time since I had someone like super, super green, you know, <laughs> and I went in and I just started talking and I'm like, oh man, I need to dumb it down even more. And then I started talking. I'm like, I need to pull it back even, even more. more. And, I, and then I was like, because they're thinking like code, they've been reading all these books and they're thinking about code and they're like, going to do all. And I'm like, no man, like, simplify it, yeah. simplify it. It's Absolutely. about the performance of it, the inspection, going through the process, customer service. This is all one giant product. And I, and I think, I, I hope I accomplished that at the end of the four days. I, I, I hope I did. I think I did at least to three of them. One of them, I'm not sure, but I think I did. <laughs> you know, it, it was like my super goal. I'm like, if I can do this in four days, at least get the basic concept so they can go out and do a good job. So right now you're training. Yep. And you have four, you have four people. Yep, four amazing students. Yeah, they're awesome. So, 
What's your mind frame with teaching someone that knows absolutely nothing coming into the field? Yeah. So when I first started, I think back of my trainers and the people that trained me. And, you know, I was in that I was overwhelmed. It was like, oh, my gosh, there's a possible fifteen hundred questions that I have to know on a test. And it was like huge amount of knowledge. And so it was very overwhelming. And you just kind of tackle it a little bit uh, at a time and you get into. All right. I need to build routines and anything that's successful is built on a routine. You send, uh, you put that to a date and you say, okay, at this moment I'm doing step here, here, and here. And it's hard, especially people like me and you that have ADD where we're just like, woo, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about that? Right? Like the podcast. That it's we're, on hard. Right now. we're all over yeah. the road. When you're training, you do step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six. And you have to systematically stick to your gun and just stay after it. You also have to make sure that um, you're approaching people at their level. So one of the things I always do before I start my class, we all introduce ourselves to each other. And I talk about, you know, what kind of house do you live in now? What kind of home did you grow up in? And what's your experience? Ha what has it been in the home inspection business? So that way I know who I'm talking to. Right. I want to love my students. I want to make <laughs> sure they love me back. Right. right. I don't want to butt heads. I don't want to have this like. You know, well, what about this? Well, what about that? I know about more this? than you. I know more than you do. It's yeah. like, no, I probably do, but I'm not going to tell you that. I don't right. want to make you feel that way. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to just kind of be at your level with you. And so there was a, a gal that I've I've got now that she's super intimidated, and, and I I loved. It. I called my wife and I was like, oh, I had a student pull me aside at the end of class, and she was like, Thank you so much for sharing everything with me and and taking the time to really explain this on on my level. And I really appreciate that. And man, that's why we do it. I oh, mean, yeah. it just makes me feel good when you have those moments. That's actually why I kind of got into the training. I was like, I just know that a lot of the schools out there, they just tell them they're going to make $100,000 out the door. And I'm like, the money doesn't come unless you're taught yep. properly. And and I just wanted to get into it. And then I realized that I was like, man, that's actually a lot of work. Yeah. I'm going to still do it. I'm still going to teach. It's yep. just probably not as often as you do. But yes, I did. At the end of the class, he told me, he's like, man, you shouldn't stop doing this. You know, I, I think I learned a lot from you and I'm glad I had you as a student. I'm a teacher. It was just, I was like, I am going to do it, but it's probably going to be like once or twice a year. You yeah. know, what you're doing is like truly like huge work because you're traveling all over the place. Like yeah. you're going Fort Worth, Dallas, Houston, Austin. Austin. Yep. You're training a lot of people, but yeah, keep going. Sorry it's, about it's, that. It's interesting when you get into the the training methodology of, of people's mind and how they think, because there's people like me and you that want to scroll off. And then there's very like routine. I got to have a routine. If not, I'm going to freak out a little bit. And I need you to tell me exactly what to do it, mm -hmm. step by step. And people have, some people have to have that. Well, I have to have that you know, because I have it. By, you you by have it. to say, all right, we're going to do this and then we're going to do this and then we're going to do this. And then once everybody uh, has that sort of aha moment, all right, now we get it. Now we understand when we train our inspectors in the, in the company. So I send, I go, I send them through multiple inspectors for trainings because I know which one of my guys their strengths, I want to make sure are being taught to anybody that's coming in that's new. So anybody that comes into our company, they're traveling from me to another lead inspector to another lead inspector. Uh, and then they do like a finish out with one of my more seen, the most senior inspector. And by the time they get to him, he's not a great trainer, but he's really meticulous and he's very good <laughs> at pointing out what they missed. That's just his strong suit. Yeah. So I know by the time they get to the, him, and if he's just torn them apart and he and he'll give me that wave like he's not going to make it. And so we have to come back and and I I don't want to just like cut people off. You know, I don't want to um, I was re listening to a podcast on the way here. Simon Sinek, uh, eat, leaders eat last. And he was saying that there was a, a tech company that once you're on board with that company, they ref they won't fire you. They like they'll never let you go. Like they won't lay you off. They won't fire you. But if you do something wrong, they're going to coach you and they're going to put you through that. But their fallout ratio to where they're jumping to other companies is very minimal because they want to help. Like if you want to leave their company, there's actually a division that will help you find a job with another company. So that just creates oh, wow. a company culture that's really strong and really tight because we all help each other out. So when we hire, you got to have that 
the team has to like you. We all, cause you're just, you're joining a family here and we all have to communicate and the communication is the key. If you're not talking and you don't have dates and timelines and you're saying, all right, you, he was with you today and you went through this, this, all right, training, let me see your work on this. Okay. You know? So, you know, we're a little all over the place. So the first thing was, is like, you talked about training the four people you have now and yeah. then we went into the company a little bit. So let's just kind of go into the company mindset of like how you train someone and I can go off how like we do it too as well. Yeah. So say you hire someone new and it's, you know, week one. Yeah. What do you let this person do? So uh, we have the three phases, as I call it. Uh, I have a, I think and, ours and is close to three phases. It's too. three phases. And so once you can get our process down, once you get our report writing down, and once you get our bedside manner down with the client, and I approve of all three and, and your team signs you off and hands you off to the next person, then you're on to the next level. So the first is the process inspection process. So that process, meaning like, um, how we inspect the house, how we open the through. door, how we do everything from beginning to end. Okay. And then the next one is report writing, which I've always said the process and finding things is easy. Like it essentially it is, easy uh, in my opinion uh, after you get get it but the hardest thing is taking what you see and putting it on paper right. report writing so like how do you tackle that so it depends and so i try to teach trainees so we start out with everybody with the voice recorder so every trainee and i call it the, i call it training wheels and so all the other trainers are like oh i used to go to training wheels I, and i get on to them and i'm like stop making fun of them you had training wheels when you were a kid too. And if you didn't, you're lying. <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> That's so we all had training wheels, right? So the voice recorder helps you um, remember everything that you saw. So instead of trying to punch into a tablet as you're doing the inspection, because you're being confused by a software while you're looking at a house, you're two different worlds. So let's take that away. Just hit click and talk and hit click again, right? So you give them and a voice recorder. You give them a, I give them a voice recorder. It's like a $90 voice recorder, Sony. It's a, mm. it's a nice one. They can just plug it right in and then they go back and they play back everything that they just said and they can hit pause, play and write their report from everything that they said. So we start with that. So that way you're not going to miss anything. Everything's going to make it into the report. And then it goes from there to uh, just pictures. And so here's all the pictures that I've taken. I'm going to go back and look at each picture to make sure that it represents something that is going into the report. Pictures are the hardest part too. You know, there's so many bad home inspection reports where I see where the pictures like, say I'm taking a picture of this Formosan damage here, right? And they'll be like this close. They'll be like, what is that? No. <laughs> the biggest advice I can give on that is a uh, train... Uh, uh, people, even my trainees today, I said, take, it's a 10 and two. And I learned this. I went to art school. Clearly I got crazy stuff. So I went to art <laughs> school, but my, uh, art teacher always said, you know, what's it look like 10 feet away? And what does it look like two feet away? Okay. Right. So when you take a picture, so, all right, well, the water meters whoop, right here by the front curb, by the driveway. Now I'm taking a closer up picture of the water meter so I can see the little dial that's mm -hmm. moving. Right. So 10 and two, I'm a huge proponent of that, That's, that's some really, that actually is really good advice. 10 and two there. So what we do in our training thing uh, is actually, I, I operate through submersion. So it is always, we focus on routine. Routine is always number one, right? Especially with my ADD self, like I need a routine. Gotta have the routine. And if I, I can now do a whole home inspection, do the whole thing completely. No, I covered the entire ground two times and I've shut down and locked down the house and walked out and be perfectly fine and stay out of trouble. But when you're a brand new home inspector, I can't even remember. I mean, I can kind of remember, but I remember like my heart like beating out of my chest to like, did I do this? Did I do this? Did I do this? You know, yeah. and then, you know, the routine. And then after a while, you just trust the routine. After a few thousand houses, you're just like, I can't, I can't mess it up. I can, I can, yeah, <laughs> this is what I'm doing here. I'm going here. I'm going here. I'm going here. It could be a 90, 900 square foot home or a, you know, 5,000 square foot home. The process is exactly the same. Yep. You know, I'll, I'll be able to knock it out. So routine is always number one and that's through submersion. So report writing, we actually handle it a little bit different. What we do is after submersion, 
they get to a point where I actually bust them down to one a day because they've seen so many houses and they do one house. After the one house, they take all the inspector photos and then they come back to me or on their own and they have to recreate that report. Mm -hmm. And when you start writing a report, when you first start out, it takes like six hours, Mm -hmm. you know, and my goal is to bust it all, get it all the way down to one hour. So they end up writing like a (laughs) hundred reports or something because by the time they're done, they hit like 200 to 300 homes uh, by the time they're done in my my math might be a little off. I need to talk to Tyler. He was our last trainee, but I think it was 200 homes by the time he was done. And uh, he wrote maybe 50 or 60 reports by the time he was released. And man, the process is a lot longer that way, but I'm telling you, he's confident in what he does and he's really, he, he likes the system and he stays out of trouble and he produces a really good product. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's like, yeah, they, after you get, like I said, finding the problems is easy, but it's translating it from what you found into paper. Yep. And so home inspection and then, and then report writings. And then that's what you do for a while. So that that's so our report. Writing when, when we first start, like they first start doing the right line, we do a uh, voice recorder, but at the same time we are sending that trainee, um, the inspector's inspection report from that inspection. Right. And then we basically say, go copy this report just blindly. So so that way you're just in the software. Oh, it says this, boom. It says this, boom. That way they don't have to think about anything other than just basically copying what some other inspectors already done. Recreating your product. So they can go find where these rapid remarks are. They can go find where that stuff is. How many rapid remarks do you have? I, I stopped counting. Dude, I, I actually keep a count. I think it's funny. It's, what is yours? We're, I just uploaded them. I think it's 2,753. Okay. And is, a, that, is that commercial phase and? I think it is. Yeah. It might be like stucco, uh, residential and uh, everything all in one. But yeah, it's, it's 2,700 comments. Oh my God. Yeah. So we actually sell our comments online and then we did get some feedback and said, Hey, can you make a glossary? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the report, though, <laughs> you know, is the glossary. You no, know, but like it is. They're all just kind of in standard form in a PDF. And I'm like, well, it, all right, we're going to start working on it. So our next uh, 2.0 is going to be a glossary. Like, here's our foundation. Here's our grading yeah. comments. Uh, it's going to take some time, but that's our going to our next phase of our comments. PDF is so. So, yeah, we're our uh, we are sort of going into that phase of you you have the how do I let me correlate this the correct way Bleep. let me start over <laughs> if you work in a, any kind of job I don't care if you're in a restaurant or if you're wherever you're working it takes about 90 days before your body's physical muscle memory knows exactly what to do during certain parts of, of your job I can understand that it, and it takes that long for you to wrap your brain so the home inspector's job is even harder because we're in different houses all the time so the the, the routine is crucial to make sure that you're sticking to that routine so if you don't have it in about 90 days you're, you're probably not going to get it so it takes that long just to be able to understand how to work with your scheduler, how to work with the people in the office, how to work with other inspectors if you're doing team inspections, how to make sure that you're really giving that client the extra uh, you know, service that they want. That's my thing. Do the right thing, always tell the truth, and help others. If you get those three, those are Clayton's three golden rules, <laughs> life so, is going to be good. So what happens if they don't make it past the 90 days? We're, I'm going to coach them I'm, I, and I don't want to let loose of them and I don't want to let go. And the nine times out of 10, it's not that they can't do the inspection. It's not that they can't write the report. It's that their bedside manner is, is just not good. You know, And that's something that is just really hard to train in someone. So no. I try to nip that in the bud when I bring them on and hire them, but it's hard to explain things as new inspectors. I told these guys today, brand new inspectors, you know, never been in a new house before I said, New inspectors are so eager. I found a bone. <laughs> Look what I got. Look what I got. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. There's this GFCI that I found and it's open neutral and the house is going to explode in this awesome. And, and the agent's going, I am never hiring you ever again. 
All right. So don't play it down. Don't don't make a big deal out of something that yeah, it doesn't need to. Problems. It doesn't need to be a big deal. I don't even like you calling it uh, playing it down because well, well, one thing that like you said because it's not playing it down. We you're just telling them what it is. What they're doing is they're hyping it up. You know. So we're there's like a a level where it's just normal. Yeah. All homes have problems. Yeah. It's just a matter of what problems that your home has. You know, my home has problems. Yeah. You know, I I have stucco. So yeah. like, you know, <laughs> it probably has problems. <laughs> it probably has problems. Yeah. So it, it's, I don't like the idea of like an in, someone saying an inspector playing it down. No, you just need to tell them like it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Your, pro, your house has problems. Are you willing to tackle these problems? And these are what the problems are. Yeah. You know, open neutrals. Like Do you remember the show Dragnet? Maybe back in the day and he had and like uh, one of the detectives was Friday and he was like, just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. <laughs> That's it. Just the facts. Same thing. Very robotic, very cold. Like <laughs> this is what it is. So you want to have a little bit of personality, but at the same time, stick to the facts. Don't don't try to over. Don't try to under just bloop. It perfect, is what it is. precise, right on the head. And the agent's going to thank you for it because you're cutting to the chase. You're being transparent. You're not trying to fluff it. You're not trying to. You're not trying to downplay yeah, it. Yeah, you're just middle of the road. Shoot it like it is. It is what it is. It's good or it's bad. Yeah. But either way, my emotion is the same. Like, yeah. hey, it's good that you have a train, you know, HVAC that's 20 seer. That's awesome. That's yeah. a really good HVAC system. And yeah, you have an FPE panel box, you know, <laughs> that needs to be replaced too. Yeah. You know, this is what the things that come along with an FPE panel box. And all the know? houses in this neighborhood probably have that same panel box. So yeah. if you bail on this one, you might end up with and another one. And you want one. this neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. You, you got to put the, you got to think like, uh, you're right. Like whenever you're a home inspector and you're first getting into the industry, I remember it's just like your focus is so narrow just on that one house. Mm -hmm. And then I listened to another home inspector. I was watching YouTube videos on YouTube, like, you know, I just consumed so much of it. Yeah. And then he was talking about like the big picture and they're like, oh, okay, well, I got to think about the big picture of this structure. And then you think about the big picture of the neighborhood, right? So you're right. Like, yeah, you have to explain to him, be like, hey, if you want to live in this neighborhood, three doors down, they have an FPE panel box yep. too, you know? So you have to let them know that, you know, you're, 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 you're not supposed to be a coach, yeah, but you end up being, being a coach. A coach. <laughs> yeah. You know? So yeah, it's a, it's a very unique position as being a home inspector. You're not an alarmist, but you're just telling them facts and yeah. it is what it is, but you have to navigate through this like emotional stream that clients have. This yeah. is a very emotional time. And if you're emotional, they're, they're definitely going to be emotional. Right. So like you're hyping this emotion up yep. and you got to, you got to level it out. I've got one of my agents that he's notorious for saying, if the inspector flinches, then I'm going to flinch because there's <laughs> something that's going on. But if the inspector doesn't flinch, eh, I, we could probably deal with it. Yeah. Nothing phases me anymore. So yeah. that, that's actually, is that good or bad? Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I had one of my uh, personal friend reach out a uh, friend of a friend. It's like, Hey, they're buying their first house. They, they really want you personally to come do it. They just don't want anybody. Uh, is there any way you can, I was like, absolutely for sure. So it was a flip house and pretty, I mean, it was just a wreck. I mean, it was a night at aluminum wiring. They had leaks in the crawl space. They just, I mean, it was the laundry list of all of this stuff, but I was just, you got this and you got this and you got this and you got this and this is what this is and this is what this is and uh they got it was almost forty thousand dollars in repairs and the agent called me and she said clayton you you did perfect like you did exactly the right mm -hmm. thing they didn't get scared they stuck with it and the flipper had to go fix all of this stuff and they did it and you came back and reinspected it and you handled it in such a way that it was the right way to handle it, to make sure that they were covered. Because in the biggest picture, we're trying to make sure that when they go to sell this house, that another inspector, what is the next inspector going to find? It's not going to fall on them. And that's the biggest picture. You know, and I, another thing that you just said there is I just don't like the idea of like, you know, a good home inspector. Yes, we're trying not to scare people. Right. But like, everybody has their tolerances. Right. And so I don't like the idea of like us trying to scare people or not scare people because one thing that I remember my father telling me too, is like, you don't know where these people have came from. So you don't know if they lived in a castle 
or they lived in a cardboard box, right? So whenever you're saying scare them, I, I just, you're informing, yeah. you know, like, so, and if your information by you not being emotive or being like, this is really bad, yeah. you know, doesn't scare them. Okay. That that's fine. But it's just like, I understand what you're like, where you get this scare tactic or you can become a, a fear monger is being like, no, this, this reverse polarity needs to be changed or your house is going to burn down. Yeah. You're like, well, it's been reverse polarity for 60 years. Yeah. So, you know, you got to get this big picture idea. So I, I just don't like the idea of fear scaring, you know, they're not going to buy it because of the information you gave it. Yeah. It's just like, everybody's different and everyone has like different tolerances. I've inspected a home and there's been a crack in the stucco and the home has been perfect. And I told them it's fine. And they're like, no, I'm not going to buy it because yeah. the foundation moved. I'm like, yeah. Well, this is Houston, Texas. We're living in Clay and City. So, it's, but you know, so I, it's a rant. As, as part of as part of your training, uh, in the and maybe I don't know. We do this. So when they before they sit down to kind of deliver all the news, we kind of have a hey, let's get to know me moment, right? We're not talking anything about inspections. We're asking the client, where are you coming from? Is this a first time home for you? Are you moving to, new to the area? Are you moving from out of state? Are you first time home buyer? Is this an investment property for you? Uh, is this the third home? Is this like, what is this for you? Right. And once you get to say, and somebody's gonna say, Oh, I've bought and sold six different houses in three different States. Okay. I know how to talk to you on your level versus first time home buyer. That's like, I've put all my money into this moment and my parents, they wanted to be here to see yeah. what was going on. And I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You got to go <sighs> yep. breathe. Yeah, we're right. counselors. Do you man. like? Tell me the good <laughs> things about this house that you like. Why? Why was it that you picked this house? And get them talking about why they chose that house. Get them talking about what you, kind of house they grew up in as a kid, right? Because that's what they're used to. That's what their mindset is. Mm -hmm. Once they get to talking about themselves, okay, you must trust me and like me because you're talking and you're getting me to talk. Well, now I know how to reciprocate. Now I know how to talk back to you on your level with you, not at you. Right. right. And that's the biggest part. That's actually uh, one of the things that's actually in our routine is the very first thing that you do is, it, you know, the client's not normally there when you first get there. But no matter where you're at in the home inspection, no matter where you're at, the client shows up, you stop what you're doing and then you address them, mm -hmm. you know, you like anything else in, in the customer service world. And you're like, yep. Hey, this is what I'm doing. You explain what you're doing, your routine, you ask them what their major concerns are, and then you let them speak. So yes, that is like a very important step because some people not, might not care about the little cracks. Yeah. The raccoons. He's like looking over the shoulder. He's like, <laughs> he's making, he's like, do a good job. So the, the, <laughs> the, the routine of asking them about where they where they're coming from and getting into that. Now, you know, what's there. And then at the same time, you know, when we book the order, we're, we've got them on the phone. What is it that you're concerned about with this house? Boom, let them bleed all over you. And then I'm going to put that in my notes so that when the inspector shows up, he can see in the notes, Hey, it's, I, I saw that you were concerned about this. I'm going to make sure that he goes over the top to address that kind of stuff. Nice. So I think we got some really good gold nuggets in there. Man, my phone's blowing up. I am apologize. But um, that's a really good note. So like training, we're going to go, we're going to go all the way back here. So okay. training. So the first part is routine. Yeah. And then you report have writing. report writing. Yeah. And then we went into bedside manner. Yeah. So like, and I think we kind of covered all of that, which is like pretty important. And I think that's actually div divides like the difference between like a good home inspector. There's a lot of good home inspectors out there. They can find absolutely everything, yeah. but between a good home inspector and a great home inspector is bedside manner. Yeah. Like one of the things that you said is like a lot of people forget, like you run a business and this is a customer service mm -hmm. business and it's not so much, Oh, so I land the next job. No, like, you want these people to be taken care of and fully informed in a educated manner. And the best way to do it is through clear communication. Yeah. And I've been le reading this book and a lot of things that you've uh, just brought up, it's called verbal judo. Have you ever heard of it? Uh -uh. But it's talking about like, uh, you hit a lot of time. those, uh, topics there and it talks about like empathy 
And the best way to be a real clear communicator is through empathy. So like you said, whenever you first meet your students, you try to understand where they came from. Everybody comes from a different background, some yeah. rough neighborhood, some rich neighborhood, some mediocres, you know, some abused, whatever, you know what some I mean? Some like, international, not even from here. Yeah. It's, international. They have no clue. They have no idea of our customs, mm -hmm. what we do. You know, we don't like to be in each other's faces, you yeah. know, just anything. Right. Yeah. So like you, it's empathy and like going back and understanding like where they're coming from and what they talk about. And so if you are be wanting to become a home inspector, I recommend reading the book Verbal Judo. I'm only halfway through it, which that's about like my attention span with most books. <laughs> so I hope I make it all the way through. All right. But um, that it spoke to me and I'm like, man, I need to work on that. And, and honestly, if you're having a rough time in your marriage, it can help save it your marriage. It can help save your marriage. All right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Because you got to understand where your partner's coming from yeah. too. It actually says that in the book. And I thought that was funny. Cool. Yeah. I, had, I had a friend that uh, went to without college, but he went on to med school, became a doctor. And him and I were talking about, because being in the home inspection business and being a doctor, we we're always talking lawsuits, right? People oh, yeah. getting sued. And so he said, you know, part of the thing when I was in med school is we took a class on bedside manner. And this it's statistically proven that the doctor that has... Oh, yeah. The good bedside manner doesn't get sued as much as the doctor that has a terrible bedside manner. He said not as much. He still gets sued. He still gets sued. Yeah. But not as much, right? Because yeah. it's hard to sue somebody that's nice to you, that you like. And right? you trust that and they trust did their person. best job. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, man, you did an awesome job. I, I just feel bad because there's this thing that happened and, you know, nah, and you're like... It wasn't like that the day that I was there, but you know, the family of raccoons moved into the attic. Uh, you left the house vacant for two months and now it's happened and I'm real sorry. It's and, actually, you know, kind of relates to the lawsuit that I'm in, but <laughs> <laughs> raccoon, no, not rac raccoons. I probably should stop talking. You there. should. Yeah. Ongoing pending cases. Yeah. We just, yeah, that not, might not get so muted. Much. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like you said, but. I, I must not have had great bedside manner because yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we always get thrown under the bus by the electric. And I was training my trainees today and I said this, I was like, look, nine times out of 10, it's the thing that they don't read their report because the only person that reads the report is the lawyer, right? Because when something really goes wrong, I'm sending this to my attorney, like I'm not even going to read the report. But then you call back and you say, hey, you're complaining about this faucet that was dripping and leaking. And, and, and if you look on page nine under the plumbing section, it, there's a picture of it and, and it was leaking when we were there. And did you have that fixed during your option period? And they're like, no, I'm real sorry, but it's in our report. And we told you about this and, you know, I, I can help you and get you the plumber. By then you've just deflected everything back. And, it, and it's it's living in people's emotional world because they have all this garbage and this junk and they just want to dump it on you. Yeah. And unfortunately, when you do the volume of business that we do, you're just going to run across these toxic, horrible people and they just want to just. Bleh. And yeah. so we try to get rid of them over the phone up front. And if they're already asking for discounts or being whatever, it's like, yeah, you can go on to someone else. No, I completely agree. Like you can find out, and this happens with single man too, you know, like, or even when you're first starting out and the person seems difficult on the phone when it first Lose starts it. out, it's going to be more problematic it, later on down the line. Just, just let it go. Yep. You know, it is what it is and just move on with your life because it ends up being a larger headache down the line. I have learned to live with the headaches now, so it's not really that big of a deal, but like, it doesn't even bother it, me anymore. I'm just like, Hey, you know what? I pay for people to handle this. So that's cool. You know, like I'll go, I go fishing with my dad tomorrow. So, <laughs> you know, like, you got to have people's best interests in yeah. mind and, and you got to make sure that uh, if they have a problem and if you can somehow be a part of the solution, um, if it was something that you truly or one of your inspectors truly messed up, hey, I'm going to say, we'll fix it. I'll fix it. Yeah. I messed it up. I broke it. I'll fix it. I'm I not going to argue the fact that I didn't. But if it's something that's a little bit shady and standing up for myself, all right, well, I'm going to go back, look at the pictures, look at the report and say, hey, on page this and there. And usually when I, if I have a problematic situation, it will happen to you. You will have one about every 500 inspections. I think that's what your dad said. About every I, 500 inspections. I but think it's between four and 500. Yeah. Something will happen, but you can 
fix it. You can and, fix it. Yeah. It's not the we're, end of the world. We're you're, human. You're, but you're going to lose sleep over it when it's your first one. And you're oh, going to yeah. go, oh, my God, this I agent s- hates me. She's going to tell everybody in her office about me and da, da, da. But if you cut the cut it off before it happens and, and make be the, the problem be the solution, you're going to be the knight in shining armor. I can count at least you know, maybe seven or eight times where things have broken or, you know, maybe not 100% our fault. You know, we may have documented, but there's been, I'd say at least three times out of seven or 8,000 inspections that it's been our fault. You just fix it. Yeah. You know, it, it is what it fix is. Fix it and move on. Yeah. You know, we replace water heaters, fix termite damage, you know, the termite damage one's still a little iffy because it was like under stuff, you know, but it, it, and concealed. It, 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 yeah. So, but, and I don't know if you handle it this way either, but sometimes uh, it's the agent's fault and the agent knows that they didn't read that part of the report and they know that they dropped the ball. It's not and, even and the agent's at the, fault. At the though. same time, they, they go, hey, but y- this is still not in the report. Right. And so mm-hmm. when you have that, Take that as a chance moment and win that agent, right? You can Mm. either run towards them or run away from them, right? Right. If you run towards them and say, hey, what can I do to make this right? How about I send my plumber over there, you get send your plumber over there, let's see what the thing is, and how about you and I split the costs on this deal? That way the, the client wins, you still are in good graces with them, I'm still in good graces with you and them, and everybody lives to fight another day. And nine times out of 10, agents will be like, okay, that's it, cool. I didn't even think about ever like splitting the difference because it's everyone's fault. Like yeah. at that point, you know? oh, I'll ask mm. if, if the agent is like really intent about something but and I can see that it's, it's there. And like, how about, and I've had one scenario where ah. in, in, inspector had a bathtub that, uh, with brown water's coming out of oh, the yeah. tub. Right. So he's telling them that there's this water and it has this rotten egg smell because the anode rods went bad and, and it was just heater, in the yeah. water heater. And so um, he's telling about that and he put in the report that he didn't put that the water was brown. He just said that it had the sulfur smell. Mm. So the agent in the background is saying, no, 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 it's not a big deal. You just need to run the water for a while, right? It never changed. And so they moved into the house. They ran the water for a while and it never changed. It was still brown. And so it didn't work. And so they call us up and they were like, hey, we had a plumber come out here. So it's both. And when we fault. it's when we uh, were in the inspection moment, these water heaters were still under warranty. And now that we moved in, now they're no longer in warranty and what's up so i sent my plumber out there to go check it out um i basically said all right well here's the deal he went to bradford white the manufacturer the plumber went to the manufacturer and said here's what you should do you should change the anode rod completely flush and sanitize the system and see where you're at from there from the manufacturer right so i bring that back to the the our buyers that are not upset they're kind of upset and they say Mm -mm. we want two new water heaters because these are already out. And if you would have told us about this, we would have had, we would have negotiated with the sellers to have this changed out. Right. So what did I do? I went to the agent and I said, Hey, our report is correct. Cause there's the water was funky. And we put that in the report. We said, change the anode rod and flush and sanitize the system, which is the same thing that the plumber said from the manufacturer. So we're off the hook. However, I want to make this right. So how about the three of us, the homeowner, the agent and myself, we all split the cost of putting in two new water heaters. So rather than having to pay 12, 1800 bucks, you know, you have to pay six or 700 bucks. Okay. That's more manageable. Yeah. You know, at first I was like completely against it. <laughs> and now you describe the whole scenario and I'm like, okay, well, it makes a little bit of sense because yes, you learned your lesson. I, I take that as I always like to say, I even talked this up with Matt in the last podcast about, we learn our lessons, yeah, right? Teaching so, moments. So this is a teaching moment. Yes, you could have reported it a little bit better. Yeah. Water was brown at uh-huh. the time of the inspection. Take a picture of it. Plus add that picture in the water heater section. Right. Then you really are like 100%. 100% off the hook. You were technically like 80% off the hook. You're passing, yeah, yeah. but not 100%. Not and yeah. you're not satisfied And this is an agent that. that was a huge referral partner. Right. I'm not going to sour that relationship. Which is even worse. That's it. Yeah. yeah so, so I'm going to do what I can do to save the day. And then at the you said, you, your comment says, you know, this stuff needs to be done. The manufacturer says it needs to be done. Client's not happy, which we're 
a client, we are a customer service yeah. business. So you got to keep them happy. Yeah. So I understand now, but at the beginning it of the story, like, I was like, nah. no way, dude. Like yeah. you're completely you're, fine. Yeah. My, like the one that I'm in trouble on, not really, but it, it was like, I wrote up like mold. I wrote up, you know, damage, flashing damage, roof damage, HVACs broken, you know, like everything, everything. Decks, everything's broken. It's just not written up enough. And I, I mean, I don't know what to do, you know, <laughs> like, and then there's not much you can do. You can't win on that kind of stuff. It just, it is what it is. And you let it go through the court system and you're out, whatever the, whatever that yep. insurance fee is. But I understand what you're coming out from that point of view. You're like trying to, it's not just keeping the agent like 100% happy. You're keeping the whole transaction the whole happy yep. and of doing the inspection. And it's a teaching moment. Yep. Just like, no, no, from now on, if the water's brown, that's in that's the report. That's what you put in there. Yeah. yeah. This is what you got to put in there. Yeah, and, and it's about being proactive versus reactive. Mm -hmm. Most new inspectors, most new people that get into the business, they're reactive to what's happening to them, right? They've got... Uh, somebody from online that's trying, I'm not going to mention any names and support anybody that like shakes people down for money. Oh, go and, for it. And, Home advisor. Yeah. I'm not they're the worst. Yeah. They're terrible. So <laughs> don't do it, <laughs> but they will shake you down and try to like scare you into thinking this thing. Just, you can't, you got to stand your ground and say, this is what it is. This is what we're doing. And, and I'm not doing that. And so, yeah, but you got to stick to your guns. You can't cave in yeah. after a while and say yeah, no yeah. this There's, isn't gonna work sometimes you're in the right but sometimes you're in the wrong yeah. and when you're in the wrong just go and fix yeah. it it's be not, proactive and not reactive yeah, so don't live in that reactive world nice so before we end the podcast here uh if you had any advice to give to any inspector not new inspectors or just any inspector out there what would you give? I know I'm catching you off the guard because I didn't ask you this question yep. before the podcast. What What would you think? What's the first thing that comes to, to the top of your mind? Um, any new inspector that's getting into the business. I would say the best advice I can give you is farm your sphere. And what I mean by that is go find the offices that are right where you live and work really hard at cultivating those relationships and be the expert for that neighborhood, be the expert for that area, right? As new um, new inspectors tend to, they wanna go over here and market and over here and market and over here and market and here, and, and they're so spread out and so thinned out that the, these agents that you're going to do, you're, you're putting on this funny outfit and you're going over here, well, you, that's like an hour drive away from these agents where they live. They're not gonna know you like you're a trust you because you're not in their sphere. So the biggest advice I could give Get your sphere, find your area and be the local expert. That's pretty hard in Houston, you know, <laughs> there's only 6 million people here, right? but like anywhere though, I mean, so where exactly do you live in the Dallas Fort Worth area? I can't remember. So I'm in East Dallas. I'm in so, Rowlett. So, so Ray Hubbard. Oh, Rowlett. I grew up in Rowlett. Actually. Yeah. yeah. So would you say you're like the Rowlett inspector out there? <laughs> me personally no i don't i purposefully don't farm my backyard because i'm more i own the company i'm more marketing like everything out there so i have a yeah. guy that's working in that territory i don't necessarily do inspections for that area but if i was new <laughs> i was starting that's out where you'd be. that's where i would be and so nice. um when i bring on a new inspector to the company their first homework assignment is i want to hear the 25 offices that are closest to your house because i have access to tap into those offices find their resources find out who who their top producers are and plug into them. Yeah. So, you know, if I had to give any advice, the first one, I have two because it, one just clicked in my head because you said top producer. So I'm going to go with two. Uh, the first one is, is don't fear social media. A lot of new home inspectors, they get in the field. And if you can go all the way back to my first, first videos, they're pretty bad. Yeah, mine are too. Yeah, I'm mine just are like, terrible. Hey, there's a crack here. You know, it's yeah. just a crack. You know, but like, I had a flip phone. I think it was in black and white. You know, you had to like text people on the numbers. Still, we had fax yeah. machines yeah. that we carried with us and printers. Yeah, so so many people are so good at it these days. I'm not even saying I'm good at it, but like you're looking at yeah. like TikTok and like, man, this video looks like it took it's hours awesome. and hours and to create. Content is content. Yeah. You know, just create content, post it. And the people that appreciate your content are going to watch it. And yep. eventually, like you said, would you said 24 
Or is it 24? 24 touches. Oh, man, back to the beginning of the podcast. Touches. I'm getting better at this, you know? <laughs> full circle. Yeah, full circle. <laughs> yeah, so, it's like a circle. Yeah. <laughs> so, to, 24, you know, it, content's content. So jump into the social media as soon as you can. Don't fear about, like, how much you don't know. You'll actually learn a lot more just by teaching. Yep. And it sticks in your head. The second one is, is like you said, I can figure out who the top producers are. Don't go after the top producers. The top t- producers will come in time because the top producers are top producers for a reason. They, they have, have their team. They have their team. Yep. They have a successful process. They know what they're doing. They know what they like. They know who they like to work with. My When I first started, my goal was to go after all the new people. Guess yeah. what? Because I'm new. Yep. I've been in business for zero days, yep. you know, and I marketed to all the new realtors, all the new realtor launches, anything that I could go to that was training new people. Open houses are like a game changer. I know I've said this several yep. times, go and visit them. Say hi, don't take up their time because they are working, but just yep. say hi, drop in. And it's a matter of like getting their information, it, not what. And you, this goes back to the 25 houses in your sphere. So if you're doing, if you're stopping in and open houses that are in that your, counts. that that's totally your farm in your neighborhood. Yeah. That's so what it is. Yeah. Become that person in your neighborhood and be, being in your neighborhood probably saves you a whole lot of money because when I first started, <laughs> I was driving everywhere. I wish I kind of focused it more on an area, but actually I didn't know where I wanted to live in Houston because yeah. I was driving from Dallas down to here, opening up a business. Sometimes I tell people my story of like how I started the business <laughs> and they think I'm crazy. And I was like, oh no, that's just what I had to do, you know, like, but I didn't realize it was a lot of work at the time, but it was, I guess. Yeah, it's hard. But Anyways, all right. So that was some really great advice, you know. Cool. So farm your spear. Don't actually just go after straight after top producers and don't fear social media. Just, yeah. you know, just document. What I like to say is like social media is more of like documenting, you know, your life in a way. Yep. You know, it's not so. And if people watch, great. But if they, if they don't, don't, I don't care. Who cares? Yeah. I get to go back and look yeah, when look. I first started my business. Yeah. I hopped in my truck with torn up jeans and drove to Houston. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The other, the only advice I'll give on social media, it's a hot topic right now. Don't get political and don't be religious. Oh yeah. Right now, I think there's the biggest division of social media of people that are just deleting people just because of what they've posted or what they've said. And it's hard. You know, you have these urges because you see things happen but don't fall for the trap it's just oh, a, it's man. a mouse trap just sitting there just waiting it's gonna go <laughs> I, I, you know sometimes you know those rules are like ingrained in my brain and i don't yeah. even look at it i don't even read them when they come across my platform because that does you don't choose sizes yeah sides, sides. sorry sorry yeah. you do not choose sides what what do you do you're a home inspector. You're neutral. You're, you're Switzerland. Neutral. Does yeah. it, you're Switzerland. You're Switzerland. They don't care. They don't care. I'll just yeah. take all your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah they, don't choose sides. It doesn't matter. I don't care who buys my home inspections as yep. long as they understand that I'm what, there to do a good job. Here's what I'm here to do. This is what I'm going to do. You can believe whatever you want. Yeah. I'm going to do a good job. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's too funny. Though those That is like the best advice probably throughout the whole podcast. Yep. Let's hope they make it this far. Don't get political. Don't get religious. Yeah. Like, blam. It's okay yeah. to be spiritual. Just stay right there in between the lines. Yeah. Go right down the road. Yeah. All right. Cool. So that's that. So that's uh, the Home Inspection Whisper show. And thanks, man, for I mean, you really took a lot of time out of your day to be here. So that that's awesome. Cool. And uh, we'll do another one soon. Yeah. Catch us on the next one. See ya.